First of all, Happy New Year. I hope you all had a really good Christmas. Uh, I had a pretty good Christmas. Uh, however, I've been trying to wrap my head around a certain project which I just can't seem to get to work. Uh, following on from the compressed air engine uh, playing video, uh, I've been trying to uh, 3D print a compressed air turbine. And uh, let me just show you this small box of what I've done so far. I'm not going to go into too much detail because I could talk for hours on this. Um, but essentially I've tried uh, what you would classify as an impulse uh, axial turbine, similar to what you have in jet engines, where there's um, some spinning blades and some fixed vanes and uh, you know a couple sets of those. Um, and I was having really big issues with the tolerances between the blades and the housing, so that doesn't even sit in. But then when it does sit in, there's a big gap between some of the blades. Um, I don't know about those. I then moved on to try um, reaction radial turbines, which is like similar to, well, they're, they're basically an advanced water mill, so the um, air will hit the, the blades, you know, at a tangential uh, trajectory, spin it, and then that will spin the blade. Uh, this is the closest I've ever got. Uh, it's got a ceramic bearing in there for really low resistance, um, and the air inlets are here and here. So, uh, if I just spin this up, oh. sorry, the blade fell out. Cut. <laughs> so it spins pretty well. However, if we actually look, there's still a big gap required. That's the closest I can get the tolerances. It just didn't seem to spin perfectly center. Um, so. Yeah, that kind of drove me a bit nuts, uh, trying to get the tolerances right on those. So aside from all these turbine designs, which I've spent a lot of hours designing, printing, and then scrapping, I received kind of a joke Christmas present from my grandparents, which gave me a bit of a breakthrough. So you might think I'm joking about this, but this is the breakthrough I came across. Now, it's what you would probably know as a balloon copter. It's a very simple device. It's essentially a balloon. It's essentially a balloon that holds air um, and the contraction of the balloon compresses the air, uh, feeds it into this housing here, which splits it off into three straws running along the leading edge of the propeller, directs the air at a tangential direction to the, uh, to the rotation of the propeller, which spins it and creates lift. Uh, now it's just incredibly simple and I just wonder whether I can make it slightly more advanced to you know, spin a propeller for a model aircraft. I've already finished this design uh, because I've been busy over the Christmas holidays. So I'm going to have a day of printing and the next scene you'll see I'll have it all printed out. And hopefully I can explain to you a bit better how it works. So uh, be back in a bit. So here we have all the 3D printed parts in assembly order, starting from this end, moving over towards the left. Uh, they're printed with 3D Prints uh, UK yellow ABS filament, uh, and all of the parts are acetone smoothed. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to run through the build uh, quite quickly, uh, just so you can get a rough idea of how this gets put together. Now some of you may realise that this is going to be a ball valve. These two halves will sandwich this ball, like so. Yeah, that seems alright. So that should fit together nicely now, uh, but there's one thing I need to just put on top of it before I assemble it, and that's the the axle for the turbine. Uh, if I just grab some bolts... Essentially this is what controls the airflow to the uh, turbine. Uh, this end is actually threaded to fit onto a bottle, um, like so. So uh, that holds the air pressure into the bottle. Uh, over here are some very small holes, uh, which when I turn that, it opens a valve and it should let air out of these small holes. So I'll show you a close-up of this valve. It's basically just a ball valve. Uh, there's a small o-ring uh, in there. Uh, the grease also helps to seal it. There's also an o-ring on the other end of the ball inside there, but the, the cap is uh, covering that right now. So uh, if I turn this little lever, 
So it opens and closes the valve. So moving on from the valve or throttle unit, uh, we now have the um, basically the hub of the propeller, I guess you could say. Uh, I've got a ceramic bearing. Uh, these are really smooth. Uh, they're normally used in fidget spinners, I think. Um, I need to hammer this into there. It's a bit of a tight fit. So this will now seat onto here, hopefully. Still a bit wonky. Oh, I've snapped the axle. That's not good. There we go. Uh, what I'm going to do is fit the valve to the other end. Let's see how well this can seal up. Uh, I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to close the valve, put the bottle outside, uh, and I'll stand inside, put the camera outside, and then we'll pump it up to, I don't know, high pressure and see if it all holds. So that's 100 psi. It seems to be holding it. I'm not sure if it's leaking or not because I've got my ear defenders on. Let's open the valve. So I know that it can hold 100 psi uh, without exploding or this cap coming apart, uh, but I don't know whether it leaks because it's so windy outside. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to put it behind this, this metal uh, plate, uh, pump it up again with my ear defenders on, and then when I get up to pressure, I'll just have a quick listen, see if I can hear any leaking, and then uh, let all the gas back out. Right, that's 80 psi. Still can't hear any leaking. I know the bottle should hold it, I'm just worried about the cap at the end. Right, let's open it anyway. Pretty pleased with that. I'm actually surprised that valve worked. So previously I was trying to hammer this hub onto the axle here, and that's what broke it. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you actually how the exhaust gases from this turbine uh, exit the hub. Uh, what I'm going to use is this 2mm inner diameter, 3mm outer diameter brass uh, tube, uh, which is what I actually use for the bushings in my compressed air engine. And these will sit into these holes here, there'll be four of them and they will each come out a certain distance and then bend 90 degrees for that tangential um, airflow to spin the propeller. So I've just finished cutting up the uh, brass tubes and also making them into uh, a right angle at the tips. Um, I did that using a vise and just a pair of pliers, trying to bend it into position. And then these will slide into there and then uh, they will glue in place. Right, so I've glued the small vein things into the into the housing and it spins nice and smooth on the bearing. Uh, now the next thing is to fit the prop adapter onto the top. So uh, let's give it a quick pump up and see if it spins. I think initially I'll pump it up to about 40 psi uh, just so I can see if it does actually spin. Right, coming up on 40 psi. Ready? That was a bit terrible. <laughs> Alright, 40 psi again. Let's try that. Maybe let's just spin it and then... That worked. Okay, this is going to be... 60 psi, spin it and it's 
it's not too bad. The air doesn't last very long though, that's the only problem. When compared to my compressed air piston powered engine, uh, well, okay, it had a double the size bottle, but that lasted for about 30 seconds. There's no way this is lasting for 15 seconds. Um, yeah. <laughs> Let's stick a propeller on it and see if it can actually accelerate a propeller. So I've mounted the propeller on the front. Uh, it's got quite high inertial mass, uh, this whole front section now. So it's going to be interesting whether these small jets can accelerate the propeller and actually produce any kind of thrust. Uh, you may notice also the vanes are tilted backwards slightly. Uh, I designed, well I calculated that to be about 30 degrees uh, with the air velocity to sort of match the propeller um, thrust. Uh, speed, uh, which is only really useful if if I'm going to stick this on a plane, but right now the results are not looking promising. Either way, I'm going to pump it up now and uh, see if it works. Right, here we go, 60 psi. Oh, why is the valve leaking? The 3D printed part's working well, but this bike valve has issues. Right, spin up the propeller and. That is terrible. <laughs> oh, right. I'm not happy with that. <laughs> How much time have I wasted on this? That was 60 psi, so 100 psi. Well, it's going to make a difference, obviously, because it's nearly double the pressure. But this isn't even half the performance of what my. Uh, piston powered or piston air engine is uh, producing so um, let's give it one more chance uh, <laughs> gonna try up to 80 psi right 80 psi oh valves leaking again spin up the propeller and Oh, this is such a big failure. So I'm going to wrap up the video here and try and save myself from that embarrassing result. Uh, however, there's a few things that I want to point out quickly. Uh, the first one being, uh, I got a few comments on my air powered plane video of people saying that I should just exhaust the gas out of a nozzle at the rear of the plane uh, to try and power it. And they seem to think that, that would produce more thrust than converting it into the rotational energy of a propeller. Um, and I feel like this project sort of disproves that theory. Uh, the fact that all this gas exiting out these four nozzles could barely accelerate this propeller. Um, if you think about it, this propeller weighs nothing uh, compared to a remote control plane. Uh, exiting the, uh, the gas out through a nozzle at the rear of the plane wouldn't really do much if it can barely spin this propeller up. Aside from the terrible thrust produced by this uh, system, uh, I'm pretty happy with the way that the ball valve worked. The fact that it screws onto a bottle lid uh, like this and then you can just vary it in there. I feel like that's pretty handy. Um, if I want to start... Oh. Snap the shaft off. Yeah, I feel like this ball valve could come in handy for other air compressed uh, projects in the future. Um, I could possibly stick it on my piston uh, compressed air engine for a variable throttle. So maybe that's a future project to test out. But anyway, thank you very much for watching. Uh, please leave a thumbs up even if this was a failure, uh, because in the eyes of the Mythbusters, failure is always an option. Oh, and subscribe, and comment, bye. So I was going to end the video there, but I just want to ask you guys one quick question. A lot of my projects take a long time to produce. Uh, for example, my compressed air engine video took about 80 to 90 hours from idea, design, uh, the prototype in 3D printing, uh, the assembly, the getting it to work and the video editing took about 80 to 90 hours over a two week period. Uh, so my question to you is do you want to see uh, a video every two to three to four weeks uh, or do you want to see more regular uploads, you know, once every week uh, but projects split into parts? And the reason why I'm asking is I, 
I don't like not uploading for so long, but then these projects take forever to make. So uh, would you guys be alright if I uploaded certain projects in uh, parts, you know, part one, part two, whatever. Anyway, whatever your decision, leave a comment down below. And um, I'd like to thank you all for watching and also subscribing. Um, in my previous video, I said that we will probably reach 40,000 subscribers by the end of 2017. And you guys smashed it. Uh, we reached 46,000 on New Year's Eve. So uh, big, big thanks for that. And uh, yeah, thank you once again for watching. And uh, I'll see you in the next video. Goodbye. Wait, that was a bad transition. Hold up, hold up.